Crystal friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we are tired of losing our scissors. I like to alternate bigger, more involved projects with things that are a little less intense. And since the last few have been on the higher end of the intensity scale, oh, okay, well, the hood wasn't super involved, but I did it while at war. I thought I'd finally make a project that I've been noodling on for a little while now. I don't know about you, but I find that I move around a lot while I'm sewing. And despite the expectations set by many a Disney movie, my tools have yet to move around with me, either by themselves or with the help of a small army of woodland creatures. Disappointment abounds. So instead of me constantly running back and forth between wherever my project currently is and where it was 10 minutes ago, I'm going to take my 18th century pocket pattern and use it to make a sewing tool belt that's just as functional as, but like a million times cuter than those Carhartt ones that your dad used to wear on project weekends. And if you end up liking the finished project, you can make one of your very own since I'm putting the pattern up in the coffee shop. So everyone go grab your cuppa. Today it feels like spring so I am drinking the very last of a cup of Caduceus Clay from Tabletop Teas. It is a white tea with floral notes that is perfect for spring. Let's get into it. First I'll gather up all of the things I generally use in the course of a sewing project. Scissors, friction pens, quilting ruler, tailor's chalk, snips, camera remote, and seam ripper. Then comes the fabric. Considering that International Asexuality Awareness Day was Saturday, April 6th, and that the color palette just goes with everything I wear, I'm going to steal an idea from Naomi of The Singer Sews and make my pocket an ace flag. The back of the pocket will be heavyweight linen left over from Partners Had to Be Trousers in order to be able to stand up to all of the layers and pockets on the front. As the top stripe, the black linen is going to form the base of the front of the pocket and as such is cut from the full pattern piece with the grain vertical. I know I don't want the pockets to be exactly horizontal, so I'm laying the pattern piece on the gray fabric at an angle. You'll notice, however, that I'm keeping the straight of grain parallel with the edge of the gray pocket rather than vertical. This is so that the edge of the pocket doesn't stretch out on the slight bias with use. All the stripes will be cut this way. I'm also using the gray fabric double just for extra stability on the tallest set of pockets. Next is the white stripe, which is mostly horizontal. I think this is actually a linen rayon blend. It's a little heavier than the 100% linen, so I only used one layer with a hemmed edge. I'm making sure to mark the pocket slit just to have another point of reference when I sew things together. And the final stripe is a plummy purple that might also be a linen rayon blend. It's been a scrap in my stash for years and years. I'm doing the smart thing here and using the pattern instead of just trying to trace the pocket underneath.
In order to make sure all of the front pocket layers stay in place, I'm sewing them together one at a time with the smallest seam allowance I can. That way I have a little more control over each layer. Next, I will sew a vertical line between the marked slit and the bottom, effectively bisecting the pockets. Then, I will stay stitch on either side of the marked slit in order to keep all of the layers in place while I bias bind that, like I did with my mermaid pockets. After cutting open the slit, I will add the binding, which is just some leftover linen bias tape from my turn of the century chemise. I'm starting from the back of the pocket so I don't have to worry about matching up stitching lines when sewing down the other side. Once the first line of stitching is done, I will fold the bias tape over so the raw edge is enclosed and top stitch that down. I found the easiest way to do that is to open up the slit so it forms one straight line and sew the whole thing at once. Now that the front of the pocket is complete, I can baste that together with the back and then bind the whole outer edge, following the same procedure as before. Open up the bias tape and align the edges on the back side of the pocket, sew along the fold line of the tape, trim the seam allowances if necessary, fold the bias tape over to enclose the raw edges, and top stitch from the front for a neat appearance. Quick interlude while I wait for the pocket hardware to arrive, which took a day longer than anticipated. I got a couple of these retractable ID badge holders because I thought they'd be a great solution for keeping seam rippers handy, but not in the way. I want to replace that snap thing with a different clip though, which is easy enough with some pliers and patience. Now that my cotton webbing and buckle hardware has arrived, it's time to finish everything up. As you can see, I'm very meticulous and precise in how I measure for the waistband. It's going to be adjustable anyway. I'm sewing the webbing to the front side of the pocket since I want that line to be unbroken all the way around. Then I will enclose the raw edges of the pocket with some black twill tape sewn to the back side of the waistband. I went with twill tape over another layer of webbing to decrease bulk.
Then all that's left is to add the hardware. It's a simple metal parachute buckle and a dark pewter and a matching slide buckle. I didn't end up using the D-rings that came with it. I'll attach one side of the buckle directly to the webbing and pass the other end of the band through the slide buckle, through the other half of the parachute buckle, then attach it to the center bar of the slide. This allows the whole thing to be adjustable. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you all so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to find out how I test my pocket. Okay. I have finished the pocket for this video and I tried it on and it looks great. Actually, it feels good. The size is good. It hangs nicely on my waist and the scissors aren't like weird or hard to take out. But I feel like I can't say that it's successful unless and until I actually use it to make something. And I was racking my brain trying to figure out what I wanted to make because it has to be something that's small enough that it wouldn't be worth making its own video for, but something that's a good example of the kinds of things that I make, right? I finally decided on making a new smocked apron for myself. I have been missing mine since before Gulf War. They've torn the whole house apart. I asked partner to look at his place. It is not there. I cannot for the life of me find it. I have no idea where this is. So obviously I am in need of a new one. So I think we're gonna make one to test out the pocket and see if it is as good as I think and I hope it is. I'm not going to go into great detail about how I made my apron. It's substantially the same as the honeycomb smocked apron I made a couple of years ago. So if you're interested in the construction, check out that video. Basically, I just want to make sure that the pocket is intuitive to use, that it hangs in the spot that's easy to take things in and out of the pockets in front, and that the retractable seam ripper isn't too strong to be easy to use.
Ultimately, everything was very successful. Even with this being my first time using it, all of my fabric store muscle memory came back to me and I returned my tools to my pocket 99% of the time, except for that one time I left my scissors on the table. I'm very pleased with the results of my test run. Thank you for coming along with me today. I always take a great deal of satisfaction in having good tools for a job, and this pocket is going to be extremely helpful. And remember, if you want one of your own, head over to my coffee shop to grab the pattern for $3. And if you make one and post it on social media, tag me in it. I always love to see what you make. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell if you like taking your chances with notifications. If you want to find me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere. But the place you can find me most reliably is my Discord. If you're interested in sewing or history or just a wonderfully supportive community, come join us at the link in the description. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Quill. Well,